whatever his tactics are, I will overcome them and I will be on top of him. Whatever tactics he tries, whether he tries to box me, I will outbox him. Whether he tries to fight me, I'll definitely outfight him. British light middleweight champion Andy Till's chilling words to opponent Wally Swift. They've met twice before, Till won both, but the last one was fight of the year. This time, it shouldn't be any different. Also on the show, the Southern Area flyweight title fight between Darren Firefield and Mickey Cantwell, former ABA champion. This too should be a classic. Welcome to Ringside, which tonight comes to you live from one of the greatest and most historical of fight venues, the Royal Albert Hall. I tell you what, they do not come any more splendid than this. Anybody who's anybody in boxing has fought here, including the man on my left, who I'll introduce in a minute. Yes, and there are two great title fights for you tonight. That mouth-watering rematch between Andy Till and Wally Swift. The winner gets to keep the Lonsdale belt outright. And the battle of the ABA champions, Mickey Cantwell fights Darren Firefield for the Southern Area Flyweight title. With me to witness what should be a great night's boxing, the man on my left, Gary Mason. Great venue, this. This was a scene of quite a few trials for you. Yes, my um, pro debut, um, my title fight when I won the title, when I had the injury, when I made my comeback. This is my venue. It's the only venue I never lost at. <laughs> <laughs> we only lost once, let's not forget that. That was to a world champion. Yeah. We've got a couple of great fights in store tonight. Till Swift, we were at the last one, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, Andy Till and Wally Swift was a classic fight. And I'm going to stick to my guns this time, because you know you're a Till man, and I've taken the side of Swift, and I'm still on his side, so this is another battle. I'm Till's friend, but the best man to win, let's yeah. say that. Now, waiting downstairs at ringside for us are tonight's commentary team, Glenn McCrory and Ian Dark. And Ian, I bet you're looking forward to this one just as much as the rest of us. I think this is going to be an absolute cracker again. They're calling it close encounters for the third time. You do get uh, a bit of ballyhoo in boxing and some strange titles, but this is a pretty good one because this is developing into quite a series, isn't it, Glenn? A very good series. Ranks among Minder's fights with, with Finning and some great fights. And it's been terrific. Um, I think it's going to be exactly the same this time around. Two guys that don't give away. Big, big hard fight. It's very strong. It's going to be a terrific fight. So many questions, of course, in this fight. One of them, Wally Swift's had a lot of hard fights. Might he just be getting a bit ring-worn, do you think? What do you reckon? Well, he's had a long layoff, you know, since his, his last fight. So I think he'll be nice and fresh now. So that may tell. Also, he was injured last time. Again, that might tell. But yeah, it's going to be a great fight. Till leads 2-0 in the series. I've got a sneaking suspicion he just might do it on points again. What do you reckon? Well, you'd think after two wins that he's got um, Wally Swift's number, but I think, it again, you know, Swift is a good fighter. I think he can pull it out. He had a bad hand last time. He's very courageous. I think he may just edge it. Sit back. Don't blink. It's going to be a good one. It certainly is, and I'll tell you what, that injury to Swift's hand, I mean, it could have been a different story last time round, couldn't it? Well, if you, see, you saw how close it was with the injury, imagine how it would be without the injury, and that's what we have to imagine. But Andy's got stronger and stronger and stronger since he won the title. Well, every fighter, when he wins a title, he does actually become a better fighter, and I'm sure Andy would have done the same thing, and Andy's like, you know, we've seen what sort of fighter he is, he will be fighting to the finish. But, as I said, the reason why I'm sticking to my guns, I, I'm, I'm leaning. All right, we'll see. <laughs> Well, as we said, Till and Swift have met twice before, Till winning both very, very narrowly. But their last winning in September last year was voted Fight of the Year. Here is just how good it was. Till really exploding at the start of this second round. Really trying to take the play away from Swift fast start and got through with a couple of very good meaty head punches but Swift is not the kind of man to surrender initiative very easily no he comes straight back with some good combinations of his own Till did get in there with one significant right hand and now he's trying to slow Swift down with body shots Swift definitely looks the worst for wear. He doesn't look that fresh. Till is ominously strong. And you just wonder whether this title is going to change hands tonight. But Till has begun to get back into some better work in this round. It swears one way and then the other. Till comes with some good work inside, 
and then Swift gets some nice combinations on the outside. Now Till trying to unload, pin Swift on the ropes, but Swift refusing to be dominated. Oh, those are good punches from Till, he's coming on strong. And how about this? Bell any second, still Swift, his mouth now gushing blood. What a fate to try and pick a winner. The bell goes to end it and Till has got it. Andy Till is the new British light middleweight champion. Well, there's no reason to suppose this. Their third meeting should be any different to what you've just seen. The promoters are calling it Close Encounters for the third time, and it's coming right up after the break. They're fighting each other almost to a standstill here. Whatever his tactics are, I will overcome them and I will be on top of him. Whatever tactics he tries, whether he tries to box me, I will outbox him. Whether he tries to fight me, I'll definitely outfight him. British light middleweight champion Andy Till's chilling words to opponent Wally Swift. They've met twice before, Till won both, but the last one was fight of the year. This time, it shouldn't be any different. Also on the show, the Southern Area Flyweight title fight between Darren Firefield and Mickey Campwell, former ABA champion. This too should be a classic. Welcome to Ringside, which tonight comes to you live from one of the greatest and most historical of fight venues, the Royal Albert Hall. I tell you what, they do not come any more splendid than this. Anybody who's anybody in boxing has fought here in Cordin, the man on my left, who I'll introduce in a minute. Yes, and there are two great title fights for you tonight. That mouth-watering rematch between Andy Till and Wally Swift. The winner gets to keep the Lonsdale belt outright. And the battle of the ABA champions, Mickey Cantwell, fights Darren Firefield for the Southern Area Flyweight title. With me to witness what should be a great night's boxing, the man on my left, Gary Mason. Great venue, this. This was a scene of quite a few triumphs for you. Yes, my um, pro debut, uh, my title fight when I won the title, when I had the eye injury, when I made my comeback. This is my venue. It's the only venue I never lost at. <laughs> <laughs> we only lost once, let's not forget that. Yeah, that was to a world champion. Yeah. We've got a couple of great fights in store tonight. Till Swift, we were at the last one, it was great, wasn't it? Yeah, Andy Till and Wally Swift was a classic fight. And I'm going to stick to my guns this time, because you know you're a Till man and I've taken the side of Swift and I'm still on his side, so it's another battle. I'm Till's friend, but the best man to win, let's yeah. say that. Now waiting downstairs at ringside for us are tonight's commentary team, Glenn McCrory and Ian Dark. And Ian, I bet you're looking forward to this one just as much as the rest of us. I think this is going to be an absolute cracker again. They're calling it Close Encounters for the third time. You do get uh, a bit of ballyhoo in boxing and some strange titles, but this is a pretty good one because this is developing into quite a series, isn't it, Glenn? A very good series. Ranks among Minder's fights with, with Finning and some great fights. And it's been terrific. Um, I think it's going to be exactly the same this time around. Two guys that don't give away. Big, big hard fight. It's very strong. It's going to be a terrific fight. So many questions, of course, in this fight. One of them, Wally Swift's had a lot of hard fights. Might he just be getting a bit ring-worn, do you think? What do you reckon? Well, he's had a long layoff, you know, since his, his last fight. So I think he'll be nice and fresh now. So that may tell. Also, he was injured last time. Again, that might tell. But yeah, it's going to be a great fight. Till leads 2-0 in the series. I've got a sneaking suspicion he just might do it on points again. What do you reckon? Well, you'd think after two wins that he's got um, Wally Swift's number, but I think it, again, you know, Swift is a good fighter. I think he can pull it out. He had a bad hand last time. He's very courageous. I think he may just edge it. Sit back. Don't blink. It's going to be a good one. It certainly is, and I'll tell you what, that injury to Swift's hand, I mean, it could have been a different story last time around, couldn't it? Well, if you, you saw how close it was with the injury, 
Imagine how it would be without the injury, that's what we have to imagine. But Andy's got stronger and stronger and stronger since he won the title. Well, every fighter, when he wins a title, he does actually become a better fighter. And I'm sure Andy would have done the same thing. And Andy's like, you know, we've seen what sort of fighter he is. He will be fighting to the finish. But, as I said, the reason why I'm sticking to my guns, I, I'm, I'm leaning. <laughs> All right, we'll see. Well, as we said, Till and Swift have met twice. Name. A man who also challenged for two European titles and will be in his son's corner tonight. Wally Swift, a pro's pro, really. Great value for money. As he says, he's never been off his feet. And he's a fine technician as well. And Andy Till will have his work cut out to win that long star bout outright. And remember, that's what Swift is gunning for as well. If he wins tonight, it'll be his third British Championship victory too. He can take the Lonsdale belt home with him. Brother Tony carrying the flag in the background. A real family affair and mum, Sheila, is somewhere in the audience. I know she used to wear a lucky blouse. But she may have burnt that after the defeat last time. Wally Swift and now here comes the champion, Andy Till from Northolt, the model pro, the milkman who rises at 4.30 every morning, delivers milk for express dairies, visiting 444 houses in all weathers, and he describes that as great discipline. He goes home for four hours, slips on his running gear, and starts his daily regime of road work, and that's before most people are even up. Andy Till, who seems to be improving, only his 21st fight tonight at the age of 29. He looks a hard nut, out of the ring. He's not in it, he is. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please be upstanding for the national anthem? Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, to lead our singing is a young lady who will lead the singing when Dennis Lewis defends his world title in Las Vegas, Maxine. Soaking it up here in the great Royal Albert Hall. Your MC is Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our promoters this evening, of Frank Maloney and Harry Holland, in association with Planet Entertainment, welcome to Championship Boxing from the Royal Albert Hall. Our sponsors this evening are SDX Sportswear, suppliers of sportswear to heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Maloney and Harry Holland proudly present live on Sky Sports ringside a contest of 12 three-minute rounds to decide the night Lloyd Championship of Great Britain. Between, in the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with a white waistband from the Sunny Hall, his record reads 25 wins, seven by KO, nine losses, and one draw. Your officials for this contest, appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control, 
the timekeeper, Mr. Bob Edgeworth, the referee, Mr. Larry O'Connell. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mike Millerweight Championship of Great Britain. The interesting thing about those weights, Swift very light at 10 stone, 9 pounds and 10 ounces, more than 4 pounds inside the limit. That might make him faster. He was very light when he fought for the European title as well against Jean-Claude Fontana in France, 10, 8 and a half. He'll be going for speed. Remember the last time they fought, Swift will be in the blue trunks here, fought the last nine rounds, one-handed, his right hand had gone. And straight away, Swift landing with a good, fast left hook. He's been out of the ring ever since the last time he was beaten by Till. Till, a relentless kind of fighter, who just keeps on coming forward and is very, very well conditioned. Should be a great fight, Glenn McCrory. It should be. Already not much feeling out. Straight direction. Know each other well. Larry O'Connell, good referee. Experienced judge. Till's going to rely on his strength. Going to try and force the fight. Keep pushing forward. In terms of rounds, Box Swift, much the more experienced of the two, but he has tended to cut up and have a lot of facial damage in his fights. That could be a factor here as well. Till coming off a very good three-round win over Tony Collins last time out in defense of this title. Yes, Till's got to be the most confident. Obviously, he's won the last two meetings. That's got to give him a great deal of confidence. And also, he's the champion. He's coming off a good win against Collins. So it, it's all looking very good for him. Swift's very determined. You, know, you can guarantee he'll give his best. Swift using his right hand, the right hand that was redundant because it was injured in that last fight. They know each other so well now. Swift having some success with his left hook in this opening round. And that's a good right though from Till. And the uppercut too. Both men putting the shots together very well. Good sharp combinations. They both, of course, trained very, very hard for this. They knew how tough it would be. Said that Swift had had some success with the left hook, but Till's getting through with his right, too. There's not a lot in it in this opening round. That's good combinations from Swift. He got through there. Best little rally of the round from the challenger. Very sharp punches there. Nice right hand and a good left hook to follow. Till, the fighting milkman who never takes a backward step. Good round, and I think Swift might just have nicked that one, Glenn. He definitely threw some nice clean combinations. He seemed to have the better work in. There's certainly a left, uh, a right hand left hook. Seemed to stun Till for a moment. It's work in that opening round. Good right, that. That was the left hook that he come behind it. That just seemed to stun Till for a little while. Good shots. And he comes straight back there, one, two, three. It was a very good round. I think I agree with you, Swift may have just getting the better of it. See the work again, some nice clean work from Swift. Wally Swift, and there's his dad. Just uh, pouring in the liquid with his back to you. Famous fighter of old. Family camp it is. Round two. Swift in blue, Till in yellow. Till had a big second round the last time they met. I was speaking to Harry Holland, the manager of Andy Till, before this, and he said, I tell you what, the condition he's in, I wouldn't want to be fighting him tonight. 
much. I think he wouldn't. Oh, till there, getting through with some solid and significant blows. And look at the way Swift comes back at him. Well, we thought it was going to be a good fight. It's shaping that way again, isn't it? It certainly is. Good exchange there. Tilt through some torrid punches. And Swift come back with some beautiful left hooks, as he has done again. It's that same old pattern again. Both men refusing to be dominated by the other, refusing to surrender the initiative. One gets through with a volley of punches. The other man comes bouncing back with good shots of his own. Till switching the shots up there, working the body and head, good uppercut went in as well. Nice left right. He's piling on the pressure. Oh, Swift's in trouble. Swift's in trouble. He had to take a few there, did Swift. And he's walking into a few too many blows. Coming back with shots to the body, but just as in that other fight, Till in the second round has taken the eye. Definitely his round so far. I wondered if just for a moment there, Swift was going to be knocked off his feet for the first time in his professional career. He certainly looked unsteady. A good barrage came in from Till, but Swift answered back. Oh, another right hand goes crashing through this time. And Swift looking a bit the worse for wear, shipping too many punches. He was rocked by those, and he's got to start slipping some. away Swift comes back again sometimes you just can't believe this man the guts of both fighters fabulous and already the crowd here absolutely enthralled by this as Till crashes through with that right hand again bit of blood by the left eye of Till just a wee bit not much Now let's have a look and see if we can see that cut. There it is, by the left eye. They've wiped it away. It, uh, it might be a problem, Glenn. It could be as the fight goes on. It's very early. It's just a tiny little nick, which could get worse. Well, we thought that Swift would be the first to cut. He's the one with a lot of scar tissue around his eyes from previous fights. But Till there, in that war of the second round, just getting nicked. It wasn't an excellent round, non-stop. One way tail, one way swift. Fabulous work. We knew it was going to be good and it's certainly living up to it. Well, I've given them one round apiece so far. So much action, it's uh, hard to stay abreast of it all. Just sit back and enjoy it. Till in the yellow trunks. Possession of a Lonsdale belt outright at stake here. Among many other things, including a possible world title shot. Swift walked on to two punches there. In that last fight, they both seemed to have a kind of indestructible quality about them, didn't they, Glenn? They did. It, it, it's going the same way again today. They went one way, then the other. Two very strong, very tough fights. They just will not give way. Swift from Birmingham, Till from North Holt in Middlesex. the heavier man by four pounds a couple of weeks ago there were one or two stories that he was having problems making the 11 stone but uh, the camp informed me reliably 
but there were no problems late on. Again, Till just seems to be a little bit sharp with this run. Getting through some good shots, some nice left rights. He's landing with most of the punches, Till. He looks so strong as always. No more problems with that cut by the left eye. And now there's a cut for Swift by the look of it. Left eye. Or is it the right? Right. Yes, and just at the top of the right eye he seems to have a again another little nick. That scar tissue. And there's a lot of it around the eyes of Wally Swift from previous battles has opened up. And that's bad news for him. that Swift has got is much worse than the little nick that Till received. But Swift's used to a lot of facial damage, so I don't think it'll worry him. He lets his corner get on with the work. Till's just steaming on Swift looks now. a little bit outgunned at the moment, I must say. Till is on a roll these days, and he seems to be improving, getting stronger, improving, and... Wally Swift has had so many tough battles. Are they starting to take their toll and uh, eye damage as well for him? Yes, it looks a bit of swelling there. They're working hard on that eye. It seems to be a little worse than Till's. Another great round. I would have edged that one to Till. He seemed to get the better of the work. The sharpest stuff came from him. It's the last attack of the round from him. Good left hook, wasn't it? And he was really under fire at this point, Wally Swift. Uppercut. Still looks in control at the moment, doesn't he? He does. He, his strength seems to be telling. He seems to be pushing Swift about. And when he gets through with the combination, they seem the better. Johnny Bloomfield and Harry Holland doing a little bit more work on the nick by Till's eye. Fourth round here. Remember, they go 12 rounds for the British titles. Good left right from Till right at the beginning of that round. Just seemed to stagger Swift for a second. He's followed it up very strongly. And oh, almost there. Swift, he's taking a lot of punishment. He bravely comes back in the left, and it's stopped. It's over. Fourth round. Andy Till retains the British Light Middleweight Championship and wins a Lonsdale bout outright. And Wally Swift is stopped for the first time in his career. The corner don't like it. Some of the crowd don't like it. Wally Swift's dad, I think, had a few words to say. Now, take a look at this. Did Larry O'Connell make the correct decision here, Glenn? Well, it was definite that Swift was hurt. Till was land with some good shots. He had staggered Swift badly. You know, he had took some good shots there, and he was in trouble. So, I think he may have been right. He was definitely very badly hurt. Yeah, good decision, I think, don't I you? I think it was. Good referee, Larry O'Connell, and who are we to argue with him, really? He'd sacked back against the ropes, he looked open. It was getting pretty one-sided. And Andy Till just seems to go from strength to strength at the moment. He's improving at the age of 29. And I would think now they'll be thinking about a world title opportunity for him. Just take a look at this again, Glenn. Some very good shots, very strong right hand, left hook. And he was in desperate trouble there. We know, we know Swift has very good recuperative powers, but he was going to need them there and he could have gotten hurt. Let's get the official announcement of it. Ladies and gentlemen, after 24 seconds of round four, the referee has stopped the contest. Wally Swift in no condition to continue. The winner and undefeated like middleweight champion of Great Britain, Andy Till. Well, I think this fellow is improving. I think he is. He's very strong. He surprised me tonight. He was very sharp, put his combinations together well, and it was a very good win. And I think he's got to go on to world titles from here.
Andy Chow makes it 3-0 over Wally Swift and tonight easily the most one-sided of the battles between them. Gianfranco Rossi, the Italian, holds the IBF version of the title and uh, John David Jackson, the WBO, those would both be possibilities. And here comes the ceremonial crowning. Belt, that lovely Lonsdale belt is put around the waist of Andy Till and now it's his to keep because he's now won three British Championship fights and what a great belt that is. What an achievement for a, any fighter. It's a great achievement. He's a very good fighter and let's hope he gets his world title shot very soon. And he's got his little boy in the ring. Harry Holland and there's Johnny Bloomfield who doesn't get a lot of publicity and the glasses on the far side. The trainer who oversees the operation. Happy families. The milkman by day, the boxer by night and still the champion. All the cameramen, photographers lined up to bring you the pictures you'll see in your morning papers tomorrow. And Andy Till has got to the point, I think, where he deserves a wee bit more recognition. He was regarded as a pretty unsophisticated strongman, but I think his boxing skills are improving. He and I think his are. power seems to be. I definitely agree with you. He was a lot sharper tonight. His combinations were a lot better. It was a great performance. He did very well indeed. And I think it is time he gets a world title shot. He's a no-nonsense campaigner. You know, he is, what you see is what you get, very strong, very capable, and a good professional. He's a bit of a softy outside the ring, you know, really. He's a family man and all that. You'd never guess it. You wouldn't want to... He looks the kind you wouldn't want to bump into him in a dark alley, but uh, he's a good bloke. <laughs> I don't think many people pinch his milk bottles on a morning. <laughs> yes, it'd be a big mistake, the mugger <laughs> who tried to take that milkman's money, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Old Stoneface is still the British light middleweight king, and he's got the belt to prove it. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated light middleweight champion of Great Britain who tonight has won his Lonsdale belt outright, Andy Till! Well, I can assure Ian he's not that much of a softie outside the ring, because I know him quite well, and I've sparred with him, and he's... He's evil. He was very, very strong. And I said, from the last fight they had, he's got a lot, lot stronger. But having said that, I don't know if you agree with me, I don't think it should have stopped it. Well, um, the referee, I think the referee's a, a very good and experienced referee, Larry O'Connell. And maybe he might have seen something that we couldn't actually see, but to me, it didn't look as if the fight should have been stopped. But then the referee there, is there to make that decision. But in all fairness to Andy Till, this fight, it wasn't like the first one. Andy Till had come out and that the first round had been fairly even, but from there on in, Andy Till took command and he had Wally Swift rocking all over the place, you know? So it did look to be a totally different fight anyway. So all credit to Andy Till for coming out and being the better fighter tonight right. so far. Let's have a look at some of the action from the fight. I mean, Andy was on top. He took an awful lot of punishment. Well, Andy, well, Andy, Andy as we know, he's going to take a few shots. Oh, they were good. There, Wally Swift has never been on the floor and there you see him wobbling and, and it's only at round three. So there must indicate uh, the improvement of um, Andy Till. Straight right, left and right and uppercut. And he taken a lot of punishment in round two to some extent. I mean he's gone. Having seen that again I think that's fair, fair yeah. Larry O'Connell is there. He is the sole arbiter in the ring and he was, he was, he was very badly hurt wasn't he? Whether he recuperates quickly or not he was hurt, and at that instance, it was worth stopping it. Yeah. Well, the referee has to make a decision on, the, on that split second. And if we watch the referee here, after he's actually gone in and he's had a look, I think he actually realised that maybe he might not be that, that bad left, but he has stopped the fight and his decision is final. Yeah. And he mustn't change his mind. Now, I think at that split second, that's the most crucial thing. At that split second, if he looks in his eyes and yeah. he sees pain, yeah. he's got a side. Got to yeah, I'll a take decision. that back. Yeah. I think no, that was a fair decision. Yeah. Very yeah. fair decision. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think his European title? I mean, they look, I know Harry Holland, his manager, has been over and looked at. I think it's Laurent Boudani, a French guy, I think he is, European champion. European level next, or do you think he should go straight for Worlds? Well, I think um, if he can actually get a world title fight at this stage, it's best to get in for the world title fight because um, Andy's ready for anything now. He's, he's, got, he's brimming with confidence that you get when you win a title. And he's, he's buzzing. He should go as far as he can as soon as he can. 
a European title would just be a sort of like a stall, wouldn't it? Go he's, straight for the world. Yeah, he's also got the belt. So, yeah. but there are some great champions out there. I and mean, the one I fancy you should fight is Gianfranco Rossi. Oh, Franco Rossi's hard work. But if he fights him here, he'll definitely win. If he well, fights he him abroad, win. he shouldn't fight John yeah. David Jackson. He's John a hard David, man. Oh yeah. Well, there are some. See, it depends on the style. If we get anybody that comes to have a fight with Wally Swift, then we've got a good fight. And Wally Swift, we, we, his endurance is better than most of the world champions out there. So it's just a matter of who he fights. All right, we'll see. We'll keep you posted on that. We're going to take a quick break now, and then we'll try and catch up with the winner, Andy Till. Stay with us. Seconds into round four. Here is the British middle, light middleweight champion. Yes, here he is, Andy Till. Congratulations, that was a very impressive performance. Did you surprise yourself a bit there? No, I never surprised myself at all, because I was ready for this, I'm up for it. And I knew that, when last time I boxed Wally, I said, uh, no one knew, but I was injured as well, but I didn't let no one know. Today, I was 100%, and I showed I was 100%, and I just went, I just walked through. You seem to be improving now all the time, and you seem to be getting more powerful, or was that just a, an illusion? No, I'm getting so much stronger and more power. I'm sharper than I ever was. And it's all coming good now. Let's just take a look at the stoppage, shall we? Because um, Wally Swift and you have already had a conversation backstage here. He thinks that this fight shouldn't have been stopped. He says he couldn't believe it. You just talk us through it yourself. Oh. Well, Wally Swift, I'll, I'll call him. Look, Wally Swift is gone there. Look, you can see. Two more shots and he would have been injured. He would have been hurt, mentally hurt. Uh, he's upset tonight because his pride's been hurt. Because he's never been stopped before. He's never been wobbled before, so he says. But I've wobbled him in every fight I've had with him. And uh, tonight, it was my night, I was going to just walk through him and fire shots like that, left, right, left, right, I would end up giving him some serious damage. Well, he's a good old pro, his pride is hurt, look at and he look. still, look at left hook, look. he insists that he was okay to continue. Well, every fighter will say that. If I was nearly out of my feet, I'd say at the end of it, I was all right to carry on. But I know, back in me, deep back in my mind, and short, so does Wally, he wasn't all right. Let's um, have a look. You, you've got a Lonsdale belt now. Let's take a look at it because it's a prized possession for any British boxer. You've got that to take home with yeah. you. What does that mean to you? That means everything to me. I wanted one of these since I was 12 years old and all I've done is dream about it and now I've got it. Right. Well, I just want to say one thing about Wally. If it wasn't for me, Wally would be the British champion here today and he would have the Lonsdale belt and he would keep it for a long yeah. time. But yeah. if, unfortunately, I had a step in the way of him and then I've got it. So you've got that to take home. It was a bit of a family occasion there in the ring, wasn't it? You yeah, had everybody was, in there. I mean, that's the first time little boy's been to a fight as well. And he, 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 uh, he was overjoyed with it. He'll want to come again now, won't he? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Yeah. What's, what's next for you now? Do you think now you're ready to go on for world title contention? I'm ready at the moment for anything. Uh, uh, should I mention it? Well, what we're applying at the moment, unfortunately, David Jackson is just doing a unification match with Norris, so that's left us out of the picture there. We're going after the European title. I've already been over to Paris. It's right there, and the next fight will probably be for the European title around about June. That'll be against? The Wani of France. And what would be Andy's chances there, do you think? Very good. If Andy's going to win, he'll win anywhere. He'll travel anywhere. He's a true pro. You see what Andy Till, Andy Till is fighting to no one. You see what I don't deny it? I was only just starting to warm up. Let's give that another round or two and Wally would have been seriously damaged. And I would never want to do that, Wally, because he's a good professional boxer. OK, a bit of controversy about the ending, but I think a very impressive performance. On well done, Andy Till. <laughs> only on one side a bit of controversy. You've got to say that, yeah. Here <laughs> Thank you very much. Love Back it. to you, Gary. Andy Till, best Thanks, Ian. Well, let me echo those sentiments. We said he's probably ready for a European title. I've not seen this guy, but maybe that is the most logical step for him. Well, that, mean, that might be the next step, the easiest step for him, and if that is the case, then that would have to be the fight. But I don't like the idea of taking Andy across to actually France because he's not a, like, well, he wasn't a knockout puncher or, uh, before, but now he, he's developed a punch. And if he, if he can maintain that sort of punching style, then it might be safe. But if he doesn't develop a big one-punch knockout, it's difficult when you're fighting abroad to actually win decisions. And he does take an awful lot of punishment. I mean, it kind of spurs him on in a way, mm. but... Let's not forget, Swift isn't that great, hasn't got that great a knockout ratio. Somebody who has might cause Andy Till a lot more trouble than Wally Swift. Yeah, that fight was a, co a really competitive fight because the both fighters were very similar, very, very similar. That was a very good match. And if you match them well, they make for good fights. But it will all depend. We'll have to get a look at um, um, Andy's um, opponent for France to see his style, and then we can get a better judgment as to how he'll do. You wanted to make a point about the referee. Yeah. Well, the thing with a referee is that 
What we must remember is that Andy Till and Wallace Swift, they fought twice before. They've been very hard battles. The first two rounds were very, very hard, both taking a lot of punishment, both being injured. So at that split second, when he landed that left hook, I think it was which rock Wally along the ropes, the referee has now been seen battling for two rounds. He's coming to third, he sees the man rocking alongside the ropes. He has then got to say to himself, does that man look as if he's going to fall over and not be able to continue, or does he look as if he's going to be able to continue? That only takes a split second, you have to make a judgement. Let's have another look at it. I mean, Andy made the point, he was gone. Yeah. If I'd have hit him twice more, he'd have been injured. And I think Larry's right, having seen yeah. it again. Well, just, just as we came on there, he was nearly fell over there, and, and Larry's watched him over, and he's allowed him to carry on. If you see Larry's watching very closely. Big now, that right, is a punch. Now, now, now Larry's got to decide, how is he going to do? He's decided, no, he won't be all right. But a split second after that, while he does recover. And look where Till is. Till is positioned directly in front of him to, to Ooh, unload should he so, need yeah. to. See now, watch the referee, he's got to make it right. He's jumped in with intent to save him there, but watch him, he recovers here now. And then the, by then the referee, it's to the referee has actually made a decision. And once, if you're a referee or somebody in charge, if you make a decision, wrong or right, the decision's made. So in all fairness, it's nobody's fault. There might even be a possibility of a third round between these two. Well, a fourth one. That, a fourth, a fourth one. one, yeah. It might even be a possibility. Well, I think we're ready for Firefield Campwell in a minute. But we're going to take a quick break, stay with us, be a minute or so, and then you'll have the Southern Area Flyway title.